Hello everybody, Green Effect Podcast back live on the air, episode 23 I believe it is, took a bit of a break, we're back, uh, and I'm going to talk about that, uh, the little bit of a break that I had, and then we're going to get into, uh, I, the reason why this is actually coming back so quick now is I got a lot of stuff to talk about, <laughs> alright, so we're going to talk about all the crazy stuff from Trump to immigration to people warning housing, whatever. We're going to talk all about it. But let me start with uh, kind of the podcast and what's going on. So I like, I'm a creative guy. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I have very strong operational (laughs) ADHD. Now I'm Gen X. So I think almost half of Gen X had that, had ADHD. But we all learned how to uh, manage it because we didn't really, parents didn't know what to do with it. And that's cool. Um, but again, as a Gen Xer, uh, we just kind of plowed through it and just found jobs and different things that we were really good at. So anyway, having said that, I think I like to sometimes take a break from, uh, certain things. Like for example, I've taken a few months off from the podcast because I need to re-energize and rediscover. So for those of you who don't know, uh, there's this personality test. There's lots of personality tests. There's DISC, there's Myers-Briggs, whatever. I did Myers-Briggs years ago. And my personality, having ADHD, the only thing I really remember is that my personality type, if it ain't broke, let's break it. And I think every business owner has that personality in some way, shape, or form, or that trait. But that's me. If it ain't broke, let's break it, Okay. So sometimes, like, for example, the podcast, I'll shut her down for a month or two uh, and just think, okay, is this, how do I want this to look? What are the next steps? And I think that's an important part of being a business owner is having a look at your business, your operations, and not just resting on what's working well, but taking what's working really well, reinventing it and redoing it and re-releasing it and making it better. Right. I think that's a really key thing about being a business owner. And that's what's going on with the podcast. So you're going to notice probably my social media looks a little bit different, but it it always looks a little bit different. I've been saying this for months, right? Years where it's like, this looks different. It looks different. Well, yeah, it's supposed to look different. We're supposed to evolve our business, our service offering, our advice. And that's what we've been doing, right? So this podcast, I don't know. I mean, it might be weekly, it might be monthly. The reinvention of it or the evolution is that it's going to come out when it's going to come out. Because I think people are so, there's so many channels of information coming in right now that, you know, we want to make sure that we are capturing all the right channels and, and levels and stuff. I do once a month podcast. I do once a month podcast. Do it every two weeks. Do it every two weeks. It really depends on all the other stuff going on. So. That is a completely uh, convoluted answer on what's going on with the podcast. Because people have been asking, like, they're like, hey, when are we going to hear a podcast episode? What's going on? And again, we're, we're evolving. So here we go. And of course, don't forget, the podcast is more than just the podcast. It's very much the video clips and the shorts that come out onto social media. So I will say this, I'm hearing from other podcasters that the podcast is kind of the base and then the material that comes out of the podcast, the videos, the audio, that's going on to social media. Because I will say this, not to digress too far, but a lot of people's attention spans are shorter and shorter. So gone are the days, for the most part, of a one-hour podcast being listened to in its entirety. And I mean, it used to be, hey, have your podcast for half an hour. 15 minute trip to work, 15 minute trip home. Now, I mean, sometimes I can't even keep my attention long enough on a full one hour podcast. I'll be honest. I have podcasts I listen to. I don't listen to the whole things. I just don't. I don't have the attention span and I'm too busy anyway. So, you know, I, I, what I'm hearing from podcasters is that this is the base and then the content and the material that comes out is what's really used. So anyway, a little bit of uh, feedback or a little bit of uh, context around podcasts, what's going on, and now you are current. All right, let's get into the complete shit show that is everything right now. 
is there anything that's just like amazing right now and you can just like put up your feet and be like man life is good not really <laughs> it's like there's always something wrong and and i think we look at the middle class remember that remember we had this thing called the middle class one time and i think at all the stuff that's happening whether it's po politics housing uh immigration whatever it's like what middle class do we still have a middle class can someone call me like do we have a middle class anywhere like are they still there because it's being absolutely abolished all right all right let's talk about stuff that's going on i mean okay we could talk about donald trump let's talk donald trump all right let's talk about him because i think everybody wants to know what, what i have to think about it and what's going to happen and everybody is I will say this, every, nobody knows what's going to happen. <laughs> like, all I can say is, thank God, Donald Trump does not have Twitter anymore, or X, or whatever the hell you call it. Can you imagine going through this election, and Donald Trump still had Twitter, or X, or whatever? Like, that'd be insane. Entertaining, but insane. And let me just talk about the election, because I think it's important that we all understand what has happened here, because it, it's kind of sad. A little bit. So here's my take. And listen, I live in a household. My lovely wife of 14 years, almost more, I think. I should know that answer, but regardless. Great lady. She was the, the person okay, in your life who had CNN, Fox, every single news thing in the U.S. going following this election. I would come home. Wouldn't be, how was your day? How'd that go? What, you know, what are we doing tonight? No. Did you hear what Donald Trump said? That was six weeks of my life. All right. So I got a little bit of a, a side of her, right, as to what she was seeing. And here's what I see. Listen, Kamala Harris, I, I think she would have been the better selection. Okay. And I'm not saying what party line I'm on here. I think big picture she would have been. I think she ran a horrible, horrible campaign. Didn't play it right at all. And I was somebody rooting for her. Again, not down po political lines, but just more, you know what? It'd be amazing. She seems like a great person. I think she can really capture the hearts and minds of Americans the whole bit. I think she ran a horrible campaign. And let me explain what I mean by that. Listen, Donald Trump, loud spewing out half the stuff's probably not even true, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Like any great business, <laughs> it's all about your marketing, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Any great business, it's all about your marketing. So <sighs> opinions aside, I'm not even talking political anything. Let's just talk about the campaign and the marketing. Trump nailed it. He was loud, he hit on topics, and if you spend any time in the U.S., you will understand that the stuff he talked about is stuff that the Americans find really important, okay? Do 75% of Americans not know what a tariff is and how it's going to impact? Probably. It doesn't matter. Marketing. They got sold to. He won the popular vote. He won all the swing states, the whole bit. Where I think Kamala Harris went, horribly wrong i think she stayed out of the trenches of really debating the hot button topics and just sticking her just sticking her, her throwing her hat in the ring if i can put it that way i think they let her stay high level and i think they thought trump was going to implode but you got to understand the americans who support trump they're okay with the implosions. So I just think there was an opportunity missed. I really, really do. And I think that's why we're dealing with what we're dealing with right now. Now, what happened, right? Trump gets in. What happened to the markets? What happens? What's happening in the mortgage market? What, how does this impact us? And so I think there's, there's a few things that has going to have an immediate impact and things that are going to have longer term impacts. And I don't know. Is it bad? We don't know yet. That's the thing. I think everyone's really hesitant to say this is good or bad because we don't know. We just don't know. We've never had post-pandemic economics. and We've never had a president 
And, and listen, we talk about a lot about the US, but they're our biggest trade partner. What happens there, it impacts us directly. It's not even our country, but that's the way it is. So I think what's, what has happened and what's going to happen is obviously we had an immediate boost in the markets, okay? Immediate boost in the markets. Bond prices jumped up. Um, I don't know if you got crypto. I have like a little bit of crypto just so I could experience it and know how it went. My crypto is up like 80% all time, like off the charts. I went down, I think I was down 80 and now I'm up 80. I don't have a lot invested, by the way. I'm not hardcore crypto at all. I just put a little bit in there so I could know what my clients were going through and understand the emotion. But right away, because don't forget, and here's an impact. Trump is deregulation. He's not cool with regulation. And he's very good for the economy. And let me explain why he's very good for the economy in general. He's a business guy. Good or bad, he's a business guy. And again, when you market and you've been sold, you sold yourself as I'm going to reduce taxes, I'm going to increase tariffs, which doesn't really help too much with business, but it doesn't matter. He sold it as increasing tariffs working. Follow me here. And all of a sudden the markets react. We got this very business minded president in. Let's party. Let's talk about tariffs. What is a tariff and what is not a tariff, okay? Because I guarantee you, most people don't even know what a tariff is. So a tariff, understand, is when you increase taxes, that means money you are collecting, on businesses in your own country. The thought is, from the Trump administration, is going to be, if I increase tariffs on our American businesses, they're not going to want to import from China, Canada, whatever, they're going to make their own. I don't know if you've seen lately, but it's a little expensive out there. So what will happen? Either A, they will actually do things on their own and build their own stuff within the country to, to either eliminate and reduce tariffs, or like any other business, they're not just going to say, oh, tariffs are higher. That's okay. We'll just pay it out of the goodness of our heart. No, 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 no. Like any other business, they're going to pass that on to the consumer. Is increasing tariffs inflationary? Absolutely. See how that one plays out. So economy-wise, business-wise, things have increased, okay? Now, the other part of it is, and this is important, the Canada-U.S. relationship is going to be strained until we have a change in our administration up here. He's not a Trudeau fan. Not many people are Justin Trudeau fans right now. Like, his own party doesn't like him, okay? Uh, he's a pushover, and, 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 and Trump will just bully him. That's all. He's just going to bully him until he gets what he wants, okay? Trudeau's lost things in the past. Uh, but here's the thing. Here's the positive. We can look forward a little bit. Again, impacts of Donald Trump, okay? If we can look forward to 2025, I just want to paint this picture, all right? Just from an economy business perspective. Trump's run in the U.S. Uh, Doug Ford running Ontario. Here's a little bit of an X factor. Danielle Smith, premier in Alberta. That girl is amazing. She's a beast. And I like her because she's not giving in to anything from the federal government on carbon, emissions, oil, gas, whatever. I don't know if that's our second biggest economy, but I, damn, Alberta is one of the most important for obvious reasons. And then the fourth leader, probably Pierre Polivare as leader of the uh, Conservatives coming in as Prime Minister. Four very business-minded individuals. And probably, because they're all kind of the same party I, obviously i know you know trump in different country whatever but everyone can, is it possible everyone can get along and just do what's right because right now what we've had fights we just had fights with the federal government like nobody's getting along with the federal liberals nobody at all could we have a year starting in 2025 where everybody just gets along and does the right stuff that's another trump impact Okay. There's some other things as well, but 
you know, I think by and large, I'm not talking anything with this guy about right, wrong, human rights. I mean, I'm Canadian. Like, seriously, we got a history, too. I'm not even going down those lines. This is finance, life, and business. I'm not talking about that. From an economy perspective, he's probably quite good for the economy. Sorry, I, don't shoot the messenger. It is what it is. All right. See what I did there? Shoot the messenger. Pro guns. I don't know. I, I thought it was funny. It might not be funny. I don't know. All right. Let's talk about what the hell's going on in our housing market. Because can I, can I just say something? This is really important. Okay. When you're doing a mortgage, just remember this. When you're doing a mortgage, make sure you're working with a true mortgage professional. Because I think as I see all the crazy stuff going on right now, if you're not dealing with someone like, and I'll toot my own horn, I, it is, I, I'm good with it because I've worked towards that. I've worked towards that goal. If you're not working with someone like myself who understands the economy, what's going on, and can give you updated current information and recommendations based on your situation, you got to find the right person if you're not getting that. Because I can't imagine being any mortgage person right now, not having their their finger on the pulse of what's going on and being able to advise their clients. Now, keep this in mind. I always say this to my clients, always. Things are changing. They're volatile. We make a choice and we don't look back because you don't know what's going to happen. You can't make a choice in today's day and age and then three months later, oh my God, why did I make that choice? Well, we know why you made that choice because we had the information we had. It is what it is, right? I'm still, and I think that's the other part of being a mortgage professional. We talk a lot about this in our business, post-closing communication. In our business, there's way too many instances where mortgage brokers, agent professionals, or banks even, they don't even call their clients, reach out to their clients after closing. If your mortgage professional is not up in your business after your mortgage closes with information, facts, whatever, find another mortgage person, okay? I think people too often just take the mortgage and forget about it. No, this is the biggest debt you will ever have. You need the right person that's working and understanding what's going on and managing it. You wouldn't let willy-nilly nobody manage your hundred, dollars dollars in assets. Why don't you have someone doing the same thing for your two, three, four, five hundred million dollar debt that is costing more money than your investments? I don't understand why people don't manage that, okay? That's my commentary on making sure you have the right mortgage professional to help guide you and recommend and advise. You've been told. <laughs> All right, enough of a tangent. This is the exciting part about doing these podcasts like once a month. I get, I get all jacked up. I'm like, I got a lot of, I got a lot of shit to get off my chest. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm going to sip a coffee here on the next topic. Before I get into the next topic, I'm sipping a coffee. For those of you who don't notice, I'm, I'm still sipping using my RBC from when I was at RBC before. Um, I got these mugs made uh, when I was at RBC. I paid for them. The company didn't pay for them. And uh, they're really good mugs. <laughs> so... Yeah, I know it says RBC and I don't work there anymore, but they're really good mugs, so you have to deal with it. All right, what the hell's going on? Um, so, ready for a roller coaster? Let's go and ride a roller coaster together, shall we? All right, so rates. Let's talk about mortgage rates because everybody loves talk, likes talking about mortgage rates. So, Right now, I think what we're going to probably end up seeing, and I'll kind of quantify it a little bit. So we're probably going to see, for the most part, fixed rates probably bottom out around the low fours, maybe. Outside chance, you know, outside chance, Leafs win the Stanley Cup type thing, maybe high threes. Maybe. Unlikely, but maybe. The reason for that is we were on the downward, but in comes Trumpy, all right, and our bond prices jump up a little bit, discounts off prime on variable decrease, uh, we're expecting more employment because the, because arguably the economy should start to churn a little bit now. So 
it's a good and a bad. And let me explain why maybe rates not going down below 3% too hot, too much is a good thing. If that's the case and the rates stay a little bit where they are kind of low fours, that also indicates probably things are going on in the economy where employment is increasing. Maybe inflation is staying down. Maybe we've got businesses now spending more money. Okay. Taxation lower, businesses investing. That means they're bringing on people. Okay. So if we do bottom out for the right reason, it might not be a bad thing. Now, we've also seen, and this is the roller coaster that impacts rates as well in, a, in an indirect way, is the Canadian home sales <laughs> actually jumped in October. And we saw that. We were, we were, we're still, we're, we're very busy in October. We weren't expecting it, but boom, all of a sudden we're, we're busy. And I think when we see that, if people are still working, inflation is down, now all of a sudden we've got more money, can we now go ahead and make that housing purchase we were waiting on? Remember that. Okay. So as an example, and I'm going to do it from a Canadian perspective, October home resales jumped 7.7% from September in Canada the biggest monthly gain since December 2023. Crazy stuff. Yes, crazy stuff. Okay. So I think it's, um, it's an, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. I think it's funny because it's like we can't have it both ways. Everyone is saying, well, because Bank of Canada dropped the prime lending rate, now everybody is just buying houses again. Well, yeah, but don't forget, it takes 18 months for this to really cycle through. But here's the big thing. Are you ready for one of the biggest reasons why probably people are now buying houses again? It's consumer sentiment. Just remember this. Canadians love feeling good about their purchases. So when we have incredible consumer sentiment, we're like, hey, this is getting better. Let's go buy that house. Here we are. Consumer sentiment in Canada probably drives a lot of what's happening relative to home sales, uh, consumer debt, stuff like that. So just keep that in mind. And we also remember consumer debt, oh, I got to talk about this, unfortunately. Consumer debt is that we know it's super high, right? People are, we're, we're just getting killed, just getting killed on what things cost right now. I'm just pulling up an article here, which is why you're seeing the beautiful side profile of my face for people who are watching on video. I'm just going to set this up so I can get it here. I had it now. It's gone. Okay. So let's talk about mortgage delinquencies because this actually goes right into what I was talking about, about around people feeling good. Okay. So um, oh, what is her name? Oh, uh, Bank of Canada, Rogers. I can't remember her first name. Carolyn Rogers, okay? Deputy Governor, Bank of Canada, okay? She she's ex she's has warned to be very careful about the government loosening mortgage rules, which we'll talk about in a moment. The reason why she's, the reason why she's, she's warning this is we've seen a slight uptick in mortgage delinquency. So let me explain how this works. It comes back to consumer sentiment. All It's one big circle. Okay. We have high household debt, unsecured. Okay, really high household debt. Because people have been trying to get by, right? That's how people are doing it. We're trying to get by right now. So we got high household debt. Delinquencies have increased. But the, 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 the first shoe to fall is usually delinquencies and high household debt. Then the second shoe to fall is mortgage delinquencies. Now, if you don't know this, in Canada, mortgage delinquencies usually hover around 0.1%. And remember, delinquency is three months late. It's got to be three months late first. And it's usually a three-month lag. So it's about six months behind. So our consumer... Um, Mortgage delinquencies has increased a little bit, but the argument is be careful because that's usually the second thing to go after the issues with the unsecured debt. She's not wrong, but she's also warning against or warning about these mortgage rule changes coming up. But I don't think you can have one without the other. So 
If you don't know, mortgage rule changes. You can now buy up to 1.5 million, less than 20% down. I'm just summarizing here. If you're a first time home buyer, first time home buyers can buy with a 30 year amortization. And uh, what's the other one? Uh, 30 year am. And uh, oh, and you can buy a brand new build, first time home buyer or second time home buyer, less than 20% down, 30 year am. Super crazy summary right there. Follow me on social media for more great content. Anyway. She's kind of warning. She's like, careful. If we all of a sudden loosen rules, people still have high household debt and mortgage delinquencies, this could be the match that lights the fire again. But you know what? My gut tells me, and it's only my gut, the rates come down a little bit more, which again, we're not at the, we're not at the floor yet. And people can get their shit under control, whether it's refinancing, the biggest group that's going to be impacted by these new rule changes are the move up buyers because they're stuck. So I think if they can get their shit together, sell for a little more, clean out some debt, let these first time home buyers that are sitting on the mar- sitting on the sidelines right now get back into it, I think we might be okay. And I think Rogers, that's what she's talking about. She's kind of worried about that, right? What if we loosen rules too much? And I'm thinking we all got our we being the policymakers, the Bank of Canada. You guys all put us into this mess. You did. You told us go spend. So we did. Because you got to fuel the economy. So we fueled the economy. I'm not too sure if we can really let this one go. Right? So that's what I see there. At the end of the day, nobody knows. Nobody freaking knows what else did i want to talk about that's it okay i'll leave you with this one last point please understand this and this is super important folks all right if you've got an existing mortgage and you're feeling tight please reach out to somebody okay don't just hold on to it and just choke on it don't reach out the worst that happens someone says no but here's here's the important thing Reach out to someone who knows what the hell they're doing. Let me explain that. You can go to anybody right now. Okay, go to a bank, someone who, you know, and I'm not slamming banks, but someone who doesn't understand how to A, deal with it, B, utilize lenders, and C, not make you feel bad. Life happens, man. Seriously, life has happened to myself and my wife. It happens. But don't let yourself drown. Ask for help. Please ask for help. There's no shame in it. A lot of our regulars have put us here. A lot of people just haven't learned how ever through school, whatever, how to do their proper budgeting. It is what it is. We're here to help. Also, if you have a mortgage rate right now, a okay, public service announcement, if you have a mortgage rate right now, 5.5% or higher, got to be talking to someone, seeing if there's a better option to save you money. Or, and here's critical, ready? Mission critical here, all right? That's the right term. If you got a mortgage 5.5% or higher, you got to get on a mortgage professional's radar, like, like ourselves, who will monitor your rate for you and let you know when and if there's a good time to pull the trigger, to break it, start a new one, save money, save interest, whatever. Don't do it on your own. People don't let people, people don't let for the most part, don't let themselves manage their millions of dollars in assets or hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands. Why wouldn't you let someone manage your mortgage debt as well? Is that, I mean, come on, what are we talking about? Any questions? Let us know. That's it. We're wrapping this bad boy up. Folks, like us, follow us, desire us, want us, five-star reviews. Please hook me up with some five stars. Hey, please. Any questions? We're around. Reach out. Talk to you soon.